Well, today we're going to do a lesson in why not to buy junk. Um, so this is one of my friends from Works Machines, and he bought it to use as a plow machine and as a toy around machine, and um, you know, just a general little bit of a toy, a little bit of a workhorse. Um, I'm not sure how much money he paid for it. I, I don't think it was cheap. We're talking, a, you know, three, four grand. Um, it's an 05 500 HO Sportsman, which back in the day was a good machine. Um, and they were pretty reliable from all intents and purposes. But this one, oh, this one, this one is not good, um, really at all. So we're just going to start from the front to the back, and we'll go through it and talk about why you shouldn't buy a piece of junk. Um, because now, I mean, granted, I don't really charge a whole lot of money for the work that I do on stuff like this. But for the extra $500 that it's going to cost him to fix this thing through me, you know, he could have bought something that was nicer. So this has got every problem that a machine can have. It's only got 1,200 miles on it, which really isn't very many, but it's just never been maintained. So if we start off at the front, well, the radiator was cracked. I just got done replacing that. That's fun on these. Um, the reason why it was cracked was because this plow mount, when they put it in, either this isn't for this machine, it honestly looks like it's some rigged up thing. It pushed the front skid plate into the bottom of the radiator as seen here, right there, and cracked it. So, yeah, that happened. Uh, I don't know that he knew about it. Actually, he didn't know about it because his son told him that about it once he got it home. Um, so, you know, it had fresh brand new coolant in it, you know, and the guy obviously was just topping it off, and it was weird because it really was a very minimal leak. What would happen is once it got hot, the radiator would expand, and then it would leak. Um, of course, little putts around the lawn, you're not going to see that. So you're going to come home thinking everything's good. So uh, at least he put new tires on it, though. That was nice of him. Um, so, so yeah, so the radiator was cracked. That was problem number one. Problem number two, and this is what you get into when you start buying garbage. This. I mean, I don't even know what this is. I think it's got aftermarket heated grips. I don't know. I say that. Because there's a switch here. I don't know what this switch does. Um, I haven't had it running long enough to figure it out. But yeah, so this rat's nest. This is the winch cable. I mean, this is just thrown up there. I'm glad I took the front end off. I never would have even seen that. Then we move on to over here. You know, the first thing I always check with these older Polarises and even the newer Polarises is this. Yeah, that's all melted. So I actually cut it back a little ways, but this was just all melted inside. And you can see, instead of fixing it the right way, which is to use heat tape, because that's what you're supposed to do when you have a heat problem, you know, you either wrap the exhaust, which doesn't really work that well in off-road machines because it gets all muddy and then it just falls off. Um, so, but you can either wrap the exhaust or you use this chrome heat tape that you can buy and you put it on the inside of the plastic. I've done that on mine. And then it doesn't melt the plastic and you don't have any heat issues. But this person said, just decided, and this is not my friend, this is the people he bought it from, decided to do this. So that's a nice fix. So what happens is, because this doesn't actually do anything for metal, it's just a piece of tin. Um, <clears throat> the heat just goes right through that and then starts melting the plastic. So I'm going to wrap it in heat tape. Uh, the rear brake works good. So that's broke. I don't think he cares about that. At least he didn't sound like he did. So we're just going to keep that the way it is. Um, most of the oil leaks out of the engine, which is good because then you don't ever have to change the oil. So that's cool. Um, at least it saves you money on oil changes. Rear wheel bearings. Listen. They're shot. They're always a good time to change. Um, I think this one's even worse. Yeah, you can hear them. They're both really shot. He put a new battery in it, so that was good. That that was a nice touch. Um, so yeah, it needs. And then like everything is held together with zip ties. That's a nice thing, you know. That's good for it. Um, so the reason why 
that's that way is because when they mounted the solenoid for the winch, they put it there. But then there's not room for the plastics to be in their original mounting hole. So they just figured, well, we'll just space it out and put a zip tie instead of putting this somewhere else. So that's the way people do things. And then this is nice. I like this. They use zip ties and everything, but then to hold the actual wiring together for the winch, you know, crimp ties everywhere, this crap, they used a piece of electrical tape around the frame. So really good. Um, one thing I noticed that I didn't know about these, this is what Polaris did with the oil tanks. A plastic oil tank that's directly behind the suspension in the front of the quad. That's a, That was a good idea, Polaris. It, sorry, I just had to throw in there a little Polaris bashing. Obviously, it's lasted this long. And with the owner of this thing, who knows? Or the previous owner. Um, at least there's electrical tape on the winch. That's nice. That way you don't have to use one of those winch donuts. You just use electrical tape. I didn't know that. Um, from here on out, I think that's what I'll do on all of my machines. But yeah, so just a little quick little video here about this pile of crap. Um, but once it comes out of this garage, it'll at least be in working order. You know, he'll have air in his tires and uh, can't guarantee much because it is a Polaris. But, you know, once it leaves, it should be good to go. Um, and then one other little quick update on another machine over here. So just so you know, I talk a lot about Polarises, but I do own them. Um, so that's obviously the, and this is the other, the second sled here. It's a Fusion 600. Uh, this thing is awesome, actually. Right now it's not idling, but I think it's because the gas is bad. But you can see this baby is clean. I've had this since it has 600 miles on it. And yes, even you can own a machine like a Polaris and have it be reliable if you buy it with only 600 miles. See the track is nice and minty fresh. Everything underneath is super clean. So this machine has, well, let's guess. Let's everybody guess how many miles are on the old Fusion. The only wear and tear on it is a little bit of cracked paint up front, which I'm going to clean up. So that's not like that anymore because it's hideous. Um, yes, I know it's missing a side panel. So let's everybody guess. Put in the comments down there how many miles you think are on the Fusion. I've owned it for 10 years. I do a lot of riding up in Tug Hill every year. So, uh, so yeah, take some guesses. Anyway, uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.